1963. He's a Hall of Fame writer, covers the Texans, Baylor alum, Waco. Legend. Legend, icon. John McClain, Houston Chronicle with us on Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. John, thank you, sir. Um, what's the, uh, what, what did John Gruden, he's gone. We know that. How is he the only one right now that is toxic among all the emails Washington apparently or the NFL investigated? Well, let me point out the Astros are winning 10-1 to in the bottom of the ninth after Altuve just did a three-run homer, so they must be cheating, right? Yeah. But that idiot White Sox pitcher from Houston will go down as one of the all-time boneheads for stirring a hornet's nest with no proof. And the Astros will act like that had nothing to do with it. But I'll guarantee you they had a meeting beforehand. And they said, let's wrap this up here so nobody will accuse them of cheating. Now they'll play the Red Sox. And the Red Sox can't call them cheaters, considering they've been caught for cheating. (laughs) And so it should be a great American League championship series between the Astros and the Red Sox, the World Series champs in 17-18. As far as John Gruden, somebody in the NFL had it in for him. They took an investigation of the Washington football team because of a toxic workplace. And there were no repercussions as far as any Dan Snyder being forced to sell or any prominent person being fired. And Gruden got caught in the fallout because of all those emails he sent from his private email account to Bruce Allen's Redskins account. And so in that investigation of Bruce Allen, they found it and somebody wanted Gruden gone really bad. And he's gone. And he should be gone. But I think it's just ridiculous. Out of 650,000 emails, only the ones that got Gruden have been leaked from the NFL to the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Yeah. John, it would seem to me the odds of that being the only thing that's in there would be very low. Oh, Paul, there's all kinds of things in there. Now, if somebody at the league office wants to get somebody, they can probably get them. Now, I'm not saying every team's involved this was involved in the redskins i wonder if there's any correspondence between jerry jones and dan snyder and uh but i'll guarantee you there's a lot of owners that are worried if they had any communication with the redskins during that period i'm guessing there's not a lot because snyder's so unpopular it's not like anybody offered him a lot of support and even they they did as long as they did use racist, homophobic, or misogynistic comments, you know, it's fine. Somebody said Roger Goodell wanted him to go because of all the things he said about him. If Goodell got rid of everybody and says bad things about him, half the league would be gone. <laughs> That's fair. That's a very fair point, John. Absolutely. Well, as you mentioned, like, they, they had the reasons for, for the decision that they made. I don't think anybody's really – arguing you know what he said and and why it was so bad but just how shocking is this john just in terms of of the story itself i mean the big grand return of gruden to the raiders organization the big shiny new stadium they got off to a good start i mean and then to just be out before the halfway mark of the season i mean i I don't know i'm just i'm still kind of amazed that this story broke the way that it did do you have anything even comparable that you can think of no it was leaked by the league office by someone who wanted to get rid of Gruden. And I'll guarantee you those things don't get leaked without Roger Goodell knowing it because he could he could do an internal investigation of emails, text messages, everything, and find out who was doing it. So it's, uh, it's a sordid episode in the NFL's history. It's not the only one, and it won't be the only one. And as far as the fallout from this uh, – Mark Maskey from the Washington Post is very connected with the league. Had a story today. Nothing else would be coming out, and their union's going to try to get the league to disclose those six hundred fifty thousand emails. And I'm like, yeah, right. I'm sure they're going to do that. <laughs> John, the, right uh, now the NFL is not getting a lot of attention. They're being sued by St. Louis, and a court has ruled that that owner Stan Kroenke as well as other owners like Jerry Jones, are going to have to open their books to them. And those guys don't want to do it, of course. And so now they're wondering if all of a sudden 
And, and Kroenke has told the league it will indemnify the owner of any money that goes into it. But uh, there's people wondering if St. Louis will be promised an expansion team to keep them from exposing a lot of things from a lot of owners. They still have the dome there, right? The, the football stadium? Yeah, the problem is that, that I don't know if they've torn it down, but they okay. wanted a new stadium, and they were having a problem getting the stadium they wanted. And Kroenke didn't want to stay there. There was talk about an open-air stadium on an edge of downtown. He wanted to go to L.A., and, you know, he's paid for his own, his own uh, stadium, the entire complex around there, which is a commercial residential deal. The whole, whole thing, I think, is costing him about $8 billion. And, uh, you know, he'll be dead before the money starts coming back from it. But it's a, it's a very ambitious project. And that was not anything St. Louis wanted to get involved with. You know, you mentioned uh, owners and Jerry and all that, whatever, that connect the dots. There, How many of those 32 owners, we saw what happened to Jerry Richardson. How many of the 32 owners, in your opinion, are untouchable, no matter? I mean, even let's say they find something involving emails between Snyder, Jones, Jerry, and whoever. And I'm just using this hypothetically. Could he survive that? Uh, you, you, may, you can't force a guy to sell. Jerry Richardson sold before it just got it mushroomed into an even bigger deal. Plus, he was in his early 80s when it happened. And that was Sports Illustrated investigation about him and women in the workplace environment that he had. And uh, and I'll guarantee you, if the league tried to force an owner to sell, they'd have so many lawsuits directed at them, and they protect their own. And, uh, you know, there's some of them that are not popular, but all of them got stuff on each other, so they will always try to protect their own. I think that it's like Dan Snyder. You know, nothing, it's not blowing back on him. People think he was suspended and he said he would turn it over to his wife for a year while he handled something else. Like they're not going to talk about the team every day and which is such a joke, but, uh, they were fined. I think what, 10 million, something like that. That's tip money to a multi-billionaire. So I don't think any owner could ever be forced to sell. John, uh, to the Texans now, and uh, Davis Mills, I know that they lost again, but uh, has the opinion changed about him after his uh, pretty solid performance against the Patriots? It was be- Paul, that was beyond pretty solid. Right. He had the best performance against Bill Belichick in history by a rookie quarterback by a long shot. He was 21 of 29, 72%, 312 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers, and a rating of 141. Only three times in Deshaun Watson's four years did he have a better rating than that. He also had touchdowns dropped in the end zone. So he should have had four. And if not for some boneheaded decisions by Coach David Culley, they would have won that game. But they just gave it away. And uh, But he played great. And the truth is, it was perfect. He played great and they lost. What else could you ask for? <laughs> John, uh, there's only one unbeaten team still remaining in the NFL, but where do you put the Dallas Cowboys in term of, terms of teams you are most impressed by at this point? I, I, Because I have a bunch of teams ahead of them, I have them in the top ten, but the guys that I have ahead of them, they beat the Giants. Giants are off. Right. And uh, their best win, I believe, who beat the Cowboys anyway? The I can't remember. Bucks. The Bucks did. And that they could have won that game, and they beat the Chargers. So, you know, there there's a lot of good teams in the top ten. All, all of them have one loss, and it'll play out. But as I've told you guys since before training camp, I expect the Cowboys to run away with the division as long as Dak Prescott stays healthy and he's playing great. And they should run away with the division. Then the key is – can they win at home and then go on the road and win the second round? Or can they compete for home field advantage? The division's terrible. They should sweep that division. And they've got a chance to compete for home field advantage. I don't think, ultimately, Arizona will get it. John, uh, I'm sure you saw the, the Spencer Rattler situation on Saturday. Got benched in the Texas game for the second year in a row. Caleb Williams comes in and, and leads it an all-timer of a comeback. Uh, in terms of the NFL and how they will view Rattler, I mean, a lot will obviously depend on whether or not he stays in school for another year and transfers or, or whatever the case may be. But as of right now, how do you think NFL executives, uh, owners, what have you, would view Spencer Rattler? 
Well, first of all, um, what a player, a quarterback does in college has little to do with where he's drafted. Unfortunately, they spend way too much time watching him in shorts and T-shirts. But he is so discombobulated, he's got to transfer and go somewhere where he has a chance to start. And, uh, and then worry about coming back in the draft in 2023 or even 2024. It just didn't work out. And, uh, you know, I don't see him staying there a year like Jalen Hurts and before he transfers. He needs to go. It's obvious they're not going to stick with him. He's just having a bad season. He's got plenty of time, at least two years, maybe three, if he redshirted before he can, can come out if he wants to. Astros just won 10-1. to one. Mm-hmm. Yep, just wrapped it up. Altuve got plunked early. Crowd was going nuts. He ends up hitting a three-run homer. Uh, it, it's it's a nasty series. You wonder if they linger on the field or if the White Sox just tuck their tail well, I, and move on. Yeah, John, uh, we didn't get to see it, but I've heard that Tony La Russa straight lost his mind about – uh, Jose Abreu getting hit or whatever by Kendall Graveman and uh, that he's kind of – I mean, he's done this all year where he's gone super old school when he didn't need to. What happened today with Tony Lewis? Well, it was a 3-2 pitch, and he hit him. And when he hit him, Graveman put his head down and shook it like, you know, nobody hit somebody on a 3-2 pitch in which you're going to put a guy on base. Abreu didn't complain about it. And when he got down to first that base, he had a casual – conversation with you Yuli Gurriel but La Russa, as they said on TV he was trying to fire up the fans he's trying to fire up his team which at the time they were down seven to one before Altuve's three one homer so there was method to his madness I mean what else was he gonna do they just got stomped I can't wait to see if that pitcher accused him of cheating from Houston has the baseballs to stand up there and answer questions now. Yeah, he needs to. It's five years straight. Five consecutive years the Astros have been in the American League Championship Series. Five. I think it's the only third team in history to do that. Yeah, I mean, that's you're talking about a dynasty type thing. I know they've won it once, right? Been a part of it. The, the, the well, Dodgers the good series, news. of it's, course, was amazing. That's thrilling. the good news is they're not the Buffalo Bills. That, you know, where they get yeah. close and then don't do not do it. They, they actually already have a title, so uh, that's a good thing. John, i got to ask you. Go ahead. Well, I was going to one more stat. Mike George is listening to us, but he's not paying attention to us because he's watching the Astros. One of only three franchises to accomplish the feat. There may have been one or two others that did it more than once, but thanks for the note, Mike George. Craig? Okay, John, um, your Baylor Bears, 5-1 and one now. Uh, had the, the rough game a couple weeks ago in Oklahoma, or I guess Oklahoma State, uh, but Dave Aranda talked about, you know, looking in the mirror a little bit and, and revamping, regrouping, and they, they certainly did that against West Virginia. Your thoughts is uh, – they now get close to uh, to bowl eligibility in the midway point of the season. The turnaround, Gary Buchanan, is one of the best I've ever seen. I didn't have any confidence he's going to be doing this. I thought, why in the world can't they get a transfer quarterback in there like SMU did with Mordecai? Jeff Grimes has done a tremendous job. Who's coaching the quarterbacks this year for the Sean first Bell. time? Sean Bell. Sean Bell. Sean Bell's done a tremendous job. And he has just been tremendous. The fact that he's not throwing interceptions, that's amazing. He's running less, staying in the pocket more. He has become a legitimate quarterback, and those coaches deserve a whole lot of credit. And uh, I'm so proud of them. And uh, I can't wait to see him play BYU. Big game for Grimes. You know, future rivalry in the uh, Big 12 when uh, Brigham Young comes in. I can't wait to see. Were you at the games in 83 or 84? Uh, when they played Steve Young, I saw him in Waco. Yeah, that was a shootout. 1983, game. Yeah. one of the best games I've ever ever seen before he went to the USFL, then the Buccaneers, and then got traded to the 49ers. Thank you, John. Appreciate your Thank time. Thank you, guys. Thank them. That's John McClain, Houston Chronicle, 83 with Steve Young with like 40 36 yeah. Baylor. Uh, Irvin Randall, I mentioned, had a bunch of tackles in that game. He's going to join us tomorrow to flash back to that 83 Brigham Young-Baylor game. I like that uh, John's always been a guy where you can talk about more than just like the yeah. beat that he's on. Yep. Uh, and thank God this year that that's the case because there is not a whole lot to talk about with the Texans, but I, I still love that he just like blew them off entirely. It was just like, yeah, whatever, let's talk about something else. Yeah, I I, I'm watching the video 